I know, I know what I did was at the spur, spur of the moment it was wrong. But, you know, I did what a lot of Americans wanted to do. And uh, I'm paying for it now. In Livingston, Texas tonight, Mark Stroman may be just hours away from his execution. Stroman was convicted of killing two men in the fall of 2001, his personal vengeance for the September 11th terrorist attacks. As he sits on death row, an unlikely champion is fighting to save his life. Joanna Remiliotis has the story. I remember that that's what he asked, that what are you from? 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 It was 10 years ago, just after 9-11. Those four words, where are you from? And a single gunshot changed Race Bouillan's life forever and set him on a remarkable quest for redemption. I came to the USA to pursue higher education and also to experience the American dream. The American dream had always been a fantasy growing up in Bangladesh. In 2001, he moved to Dallas, to what he thought was the land of opportunity. So this is where it happened. Then he pulled the gun, like up and holding like this. It was 10 days after 9-11. Buyan was working the day shift at a gas station across the street when a man with a gun charged in. How close was he to you? Four to five feet, like, like this distance. Seconds later, it became chillingly clear this was not a regular robbery. Uh, I offered the cash and I said, here's all the money. Take it, but don't shoot me, please. And, but in return, he, he asked, where are you from? I felt the sensation of a million bees stinging my face. And I heard an explosion. I couldn't believe and I was not sure, did it really shoot me or it was a hallucination? Did you see, what did you see? I looked down at the floor and I saw blood was pouring like an open faucet from the right side of my head. Did you and think I, you were going to die? I thought that maybe I'm going to die today. A few days before, a few blocks away, that same gunman shot and killed another store clerk of Pakistani descent. Two weeks later, another point-blank shooting, this time an Indian man who ran a gas station nearby. That shooting was caught in this disturbing security camera video and helped police track down the gunman. 31-year-old Mark Stroman, a self-styled American patriot who claimed he was doing what every American wanted to do, seek vengeance for the 9-11 terror attacks. I just snapped. Uh, you know, the whole, everybody was saying, let's get them. Let's get the dirty bastards. Strowman even called himself the Arab Slayer. Incorrectly, it turned out. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm, the, I'm, that, I'm that dumb Texan redneck. That was my stupidity, you know, even the man from, from India. You know, I thought he was an Arab. I ask you, is this indeed a photograph of your husband, Vazadev Patel? <laughs> the trial was emotional. The judgment, harsh. Strowman was convicted of capital murder and sentenced to death row. His victims were left to pick up the pieces. Duri Hassan had four children and no husband to help raise them. Alka Patel took over the same gas station where her husband was killed. Her children, she says, also paid the highest price. And I don't have time to spend with them. So all the time when I look at those two children, I feel guilty. Buyan's scars are different. The doctor could save my eyes, my, I mean, one eye, but the vision is gone from the right eye, and I'm still carrying more than 35 pellets on the right side of my head and my face. It would be years before he could build a career as an IT specialist and shake a sense of constant dread. At the beginning, I was afraid. I was scared of people with tattoo. I was scared of people, uh, they don't like different colors. I started thinking that I have to overcome, otherwise I'll be always like this for the rest of my life. What he overcame was nothing short of remarkable. 
Mark Stroman has been in this prison behind me for nearly 10 years. His execution is set for tomorrow. Stroman is pleading for forgiveness, says he's a changed man. But what makes this story so extraordinary is that Race Buyan, the sole survivor of his violent attacks, believes him and incredibly is now trying to save his life. I have experienced how I felt when I was in a death situation. And I don't, I don't want people to go to the same kind of situation like me. I don't, I don't want that any human life should face that kind of moment, unwanted death, unprepared, you know. Even the man who tried to kill you. Even the man tried to kill me because he's a human being too. What helped sway Buyan? Jailhouse interviews and a blog Stroman wrote from prison. Musings of regret, remorse. Then, last month, this. A letter from Stroman directly. Dear Reis, my death is slotted in Huntsville, Texas, July 20, 2011. I did you a very terrible injustice, but you have still reached out from within to help me. Let it be known it's from my heart. The letter also convinced Buyan he had to forgive Stroman face to face. And if I get any chance, I will, I will just give him a hug to make sure that he, he really feels that I'm not saying just for the sake of saying, I really mean it that. I strongly believe that Mark's... For months, Buyan has taken that message of forgiveness to the courts, to the Texas Parole Board, to local media, and even to Europe this month to gather support from human rights groups. A petition he began has collected more than 20,000 signatures. The widows of Stroman's other victims are also behind him. Along the way, his one-man mission has become much bigger than himself. September 11 caused a huge damage to this nation, to this country. I see people are full of fear here. And um, they need to get this message that still we can live in a better world if we just forgive each other. Let me just see what he's doing. Yes. Hold on. The story of hope out of horror has captured media attention around the world, but no one is following it more closely than documentary filmmaker Ilan Ziv. I see the interview, you know, it's wonderful because you look very different. Reruns after reruns of the media coverage, watching it, I snapped. Because of that, I decided to follow him. Ziv has also interviewed Stroman several times over the years and has come to know a man he says yes, is racked with guilt and regret. I mean, everything I've done, I can, I, I shut my eyes and, you know, I can't escape it. I have nightmares. I mean, you see how emotional he was crying. Ziv says Buyan's forgiveness has deeply affected a man staring at the end of his life. And I think that the fact that Race forgave, I mean, I think it's profound. I mean, I don't think we can understand how profound it is. So what Race did, I said to Race, that what he did, he, he somehow created this healing for everybody. And when you hear about his interpretation of Islam, I mean, I sign in. We should all sign it. If this is Islam, I want to be Muslim. Just what the hell is clemency out here besides, besides non-existent? Rick Halperin is an anti-death penalty activist, helping Buyan get his message of mercy out to civil rights groups across the country. He wants to be hopeful. He is realistic. Death row reprieves in Texas are rare. If the wishes of a survivor and other family members of the widows who lost their husbands to Mark's violence, if those wishes are not to be adhered to, then why do we have clemency? In my opinion, we've kept him alive too long already. I'm a born Texan. Michael McCurry says his anger speaks for many here. He knew one of the victims, Wakar Hassan. He was a very nice man. He didn't deserve what happened to him. McCurry has no sympathy for Stroman or for Buyan's attempt to spare his life. You stop the violence by taking his life. I think they should do it publicly. I think they should bring back the hangings and hang him in public. That way, that many people wouldn't do what he done. Please, join this campaign. Please, show mercy. Please. That sentiment is inescapable, and the 11th hour appeals have become more urgent, more desperate. Please, please, please. Partisan parole. But there is no sign of mercy from state authorities, and Buyan still hasn't heard if he will get to see Stroman. 
Hello. It is an uphill battle. How are you? Good. How are you keeping up? <laughs> good, good Long night, eh? <laughs> yeah. Come on in. You ready? Yep. Buyan seems tireless, but he is exhausted. Late one night, he met us at our hotel in Dallas. We had a message from Stroman, recorded during a final jailhouse interview. It's probably the closest he'll get to him, and likely the last he'll see of him. Mr. Reyes, thank you for your, your inspiring act of, of compassion towards me. You have forgiven me, you have forgiven the unforgivable, and I have a lot of love and respect for you. Dude, just rock on. Thank you for giving me. Okay, I'm crying inside, but I was feeling so emotional that he got the message. He he is a different person, and he deserved to to live. He deserved to spread this message not only to me, to all over the world, so that we can live in a better society. In the United States, and for Buyan, 9-11, the narrative of violence and vengeance is inescapable. Buyan can't change it alone. He is simply one man who wants to try. Well, a remarkable story. Um, the execution set for tomorrow night. Uh, what's the appeal process? Where is it now? The appeals are ex exactly what you think of when you think of 11th hour appeals. They were in court today. They're back in court tomorrow. They're fighting for a stay in the execution. They're also fighting for Buyan to get into the prison to meet with Stroman face to face. And at the very least, they're hoping to postpone the execution long enough for that visit to happen. Now, Buyan, Buyan has received thousands of emails and letters of support, but the reality is Stroman is on death row in Texas, a state where the number of executions has only gone up over the years. And Buyan knows that. But he says he will be standing outside that prison tomorrow evening, still hoping that his message of forgiveness will prevail. All right. Thanks, Joanna.